I'm still studying until the middle of the night, and my friends in medical school are still going out and drinking and partying and those sorts of things. So it's an interesting delay in, in gratification, and it is an interesting sacrifice that you're making in that you're delaying a lot about your life, and that's just what sort of comes with it. You're, you're not going to be able to have a job in medical school any more than you know, a few, few you know, moments to, de to devote here and there. And so again, you're, you're basically delaying your ability to make money, to take care of your family, to take care of yourself for the sake of the future. So medical school, four years, step one through three, those are the tests you have to take in order to be you know, a full-fledged doctor. So you know, undergraduate, you gotta take that MCAT, you gotta do work really hard. Medical school, you gotta do the best, more of the same for four years. More steps, more delaying gratification, and then comes, comes the residency period. And that is even more delayed gratification. So I spent six years in residency. Um, all neurosurgery residencies are now a minimum of seven years. So you look at that, that was my age of 27 through 33. You're, you're at the stage right now where you're a full-fledged doctor, but you're still in the learning process. And so again, you're, you're delaying your gratification. You're still having an answer to a boss. You're still having to have someone tell you when to get up in the morning, when to arrive at work. You still need permission to leave work. It's, it's an interesting experience, but it really is the beginning times of really being a doctor. Being in medical school, you'll learn the anatomy, you know, you work on the cadaver, you see patients, but really, you know, you, you ask the resident when you can go to the bathroom. I mean, it's ridiculous stuff like that. Your friends are, have their careers as engineers, they have their kids, you know, they're taking them to daycare, they're taking them to all these sorts of things, and, and you're still asking permission to go to the bathroom. So, it's a, it's a delayed gratification along the way, but neurosurgery, different from many things, the amount of responsibility and the amount of things that are put on your shoulders, even as a resident, as an intern, you know, a first year resident, is, is <coughs> and it's, it's honestly, it's not for everybody, but it's, it's something that if you love it, it's worth it, for sure. Um, you know, because the patients that you're dealing with, even as an intern, no one comes to a brain surgeon with a non-serious problem. No one comes to the brain surgeon and says, hey, give me surgery. You know, every single person in your job, you have to convince to have surgery. And so, as a result of that, they have to trust you with the, the very thing that makes them who they are. You know, our memories our thoughts, our ability to talk, our ability to communicate, our ability to express emotions to each other, they're, they're trusting you with that. Even as a resident, they're trusting you with that. And so it's a lot of responsibility, it's a lot of pressure, but it is the most rewarding thing that I personally could, could ever imagine. But again, it's a tough road, it's stressful, it's difficult. Um, you know, they have this new 80-hour work week where you're not allowed to work more than 